at the very end of 2022, apparel brand Tracksmith introduced its first running shoe with a lot of fanfare. But now that the initial hype has subsided, and now that I've had a chance to log about 100 miles in this shoe, it's time to talk again about the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kopuzi and I'm a non elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk to you guys about the Tracksmith Elliott Runner after 100 miles. But before I do, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Tracksmith sent to me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for them. However, nobody's paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Tracksmith Elliott. So for my longer term review on shoes, I like to break it up in terms of how I've been using the shoe and how the shoe's been holding up. Now for this shoe, I've been using it as a daily trainer. I also like it for long-ish runs and also for casual wear because it does look pretty fantastic. But because it's a little bit firmer than I'd like, especially considering that there's a double layer of Piba foam in here, I don't find myself typically relying on it for recovery runs or days where my body's a little bit more beat up. On the other end of the spectrum, it's not exactly a shoe that I've been loving for workouts, but the responsiveness of the Piba foam that's in the Elliott Runner does make it suitable for things like throwing in some strides during the middle of an easy run or some lighter workouts that you might have, like a early season fartlek. Now the other thing about this shoe that I find is that it generally takes me a good 10 to 15 minutes to start feeling comfortable in the shoe. Those initial minutes in the shoe always feel a little bit surprisingly harsh to me, but then the shoe tends to like kind of mellow out after that first mile or so. And it turns into a shoe that really just flows very nicely. In terms of versatility, I do feel like this shoe can go off-road just a little bit, like grassy parks and maybe some gravel paths, but I wouldn't exactly call it a trail shoe. Now, in terms of how this shoe has been holding up over the 100 miles, I say that it's been a very consistent shoe. Now, there is some creasing that's happening, at least from a visual perspective along the midsole of the shoe, but that really hasn't translated very much in terms of what I'm feeling underfoot. I feel like it's still pretty close to what I felt right out of the box at the 100 mile mark. Although, to be honest, I really was hoping that it would soften up just a little bit over the miles, because like I said, I do feel like in that first mile or two, I really was looking for something to be a little bit softer for me. And I also feel like this is a shoe that I'd really prefer to be able to take on some more of like recovery runs. So if it softened up just a little bit, and maybe if the fit of the upper loosened up just a touch, then I think that you'd have a really nice easy day shoe, daily trainer, that you could also take for some recovery runs, but that's not really what I got for the shoe. The upper on the shoe has a bit of a snug fit and it has loosened up just a little bit over the last 100 miles, but it's not gonna convert into something that's super soft or sock-like. Instead, it has a little bit more of a locked-in feeling that I think fits really well with the road manners of the shoe, which leave it in that kind of daily training and light workout type of shoe. The one kind of gripe that I have about this shoe is the shoelaces. I think they look fantastic and they feel premium, which is weird because I never thought that I would say a shoelace did or didn't feel premium. And yet these definitely feel a little bit extra fancy. The problem that I have with them though, is that they seem to be like heavy. And for me, unless I'm really careful about how I cinch down that double knot, uh, I find that the shoe, especially my right shoe for some reason, tends to get untied. And some of the runs in the Tracksmith Elliott, I find that I have to resort to a triple knot on that right foot in order to make sure that I'm not going to have an untied shoe within a handful of miles. Other than that, I feel like the upper looks great. I know that it is a very clean shoe. And initially I ran in some kind of wet conditions early on in my testing of the shoe. And a lot of you guys were really concerned that I was ruining it. But I feel like for a shoe that costs what this shoe does, getting some dirt on the shoe only adds to the character and it helps you develop a patina 
if you will. Now, moving to the outsole, I feel like the tread is holding up exceptionally well. I'm actually quite surprised at how well it's doing. I feel like there's almost no wear visible on the shoe. And overall, I found the durability of the outsole to be a bit surprising. I wasn't expecting it to hold up this well over the miles. As far as the rest of the upper goes, I don't see a single stitch that's starting to come undone or any part of the fabric that's wearing down any faster than I would normally expect. Other than the fine patina that I have developed on the toes of the shoe, the upper is still immaculate. All right, with all that being said, let's get to the summary portion of the video. First, let's talk about who's this shoe for and what's it best for. This shoe is definitely a daily trainer and it's a very good one, but given the price of this shoe, this shoe is best for Tracksmith super fans. I would essentially consider this as an accessible collectible or wearable art. Now let's talk about some pairing options for this shoe. For me, I'll give you two. The first one that I think makes the most sense, even though these shoes do look very different, is going to be the Speedland PDX. This is also another shoe with a removable p backs insert, just like the Tracksmith Elite has. So they have a similar kind of like dual p foam technology going on in this shoe. And this shoe is also kind of like a bespoke trail shoe full of the latest and greatest in technology, including a double BOA lacing system, as well as a ton ton of other amazing trail features. It also has an amazing price to go along with it, just like the Tracksmith Elliott does. Now, the other shoe that I think pairs really nicely with the Tracksmith Elliott is going to be a racing option that I'm going to give you. And given kind of like some of the road manners and mechanics of the shoe, I think that the race shoe that goes best with the Tracksmith Elliott is going to be the Adidas Adios Pro 3. All right, now let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe. This shoe comes in, and I've mentioned that it's expensive already, right? And right now, this shoe sells for $198. There are now, I think, four color options available for this shoe. Uh, I think the ivory on ivory is probably the cleanest of all four. I'm particularly partial on the black on black. But overall, I think that the initial launch colorway, this ivory with the navy, is probably like the most track smithy of all of them and i think that i actually like this one best uh, but you're not going to find this shoe on sale i feel like it's available in most sizes now but it's not going to be one of those shoes that everyone's going to be able to get like kind of all year round so if you're thinking about getting the shoe i'd say get it right now but in terms of like what the competition to this shoe is it's really kind of hard to figure out because you are paying for kind of like getting that first Tracksmith shoe. You're kind of paying for the Tracksmith branding on the shoe. And the fact that this is, compared to most other shoes that are out there from these bigger brands, you're getting a very small run type of shoe. So it's a very exclusive, very limited type of product. And I think one of the closest, I think in terms of like the design aspects of it, is gonna be something like the District Vision collab version of the New Balance RC Elite version two. That one comes in at $220. It's a fuel cell foam shoe that has a carbon plate in it. It's meant for racing, but it also has that kind of like really bespoke collab extraness to it. But those shoes are really very different in terms of like the kind of ride that they offer and the functionality that they provide. So let's talk about shoes that like brass tacks in terms of what you're feeling on your feet, close your eyes, don't care about what the shoe looks like, just care about what it feels like. There's two that come to mind. Now the first one that I'll mention is the shoe that I mentioned in the first time I made a video about the Tracksmith Elite Runner, and that's gonna be the Endorphin Speed 3. I do think that's still a really good comparison point, and that comes in at 170 bucks. There's another shoe also that a lot of you guys mentioned that you thought that the Tracksmith Elliott owner was too much of a clone of, but for me, in terms of like underfoot, what am I feeling? I think that the closest shoe now, having run in the shoe for 100 miles, is going to be the Adizero SL. Now, this is a shoe that I've mentioned a bunch of times just coincidentally over the past month or so in a lot of other reviews, but I feel like the way that the light strike is a little bit on the firm side, and then there's like a little puck of light strike 
Pro in the forefoot of the shoe. You can kind of see it through some of the grooves in the outsole on the shoe. I think that a lot of the ride mechanics are very similar between both of these shoes. And the pricing on the shoe is like super weird. At the time of filming of this video, the normal 120 retail price was discounted down to $84. The weird thing is like a week ago, I made a video that mentioned this shoe and it was at full retail price. And like two weeks before that, the shoe was on sale, I think for like $88. So I think Adidas has either kind of like two co-chairs in charge of pricing and they fight back and forth in terms of what the prices on shoes are gonna be, or they have one mega genius who's a master of pricing theory that figures out how to price the shoe. But either way, even at the full retail price of 120, I feel like you are getting a better experience in the Tracksmith Elliott, but you're getting a very comparable one in the Adizero SL. So if you're looking at it like miles to per dollar kind of analysis, I do think that the Adizero SL definitely wins. But the weird thing is, even though this has been a year where I've been complaining about how every shoe is just a little bit more expensive than it should be, I'm overall not all that upset at the $198 price point for the Tracksmith Elliott Runner. If you look at like kind of the pricing of all the other stuff that Tracksmith provides, I feel like compared to the price of the half tights, compared to the price of like the everyday training singlet, I feel like the 198 makes a lot of sense. I feel like they've priced it really well and I think that they know their audience. So those are my thoughts on the Tracksmith Elliott Runner after 100 miles. If you have any questions about this shoe or any of the other shoes that I mentioned today, feel free to leave them in the comments down below or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?